you all are most welcome in this uh, class of uh, herbert dispenser here we will discuss about uh, herbert dispenser so oh, we will see the in brief about herbert dispenser here now the herbert dispenser uh the life period of herbert dispenser is 1822 1903 he is a british sociologist uh, life and work of herbert dispenser herbert dispenser is known as pioneer of social evolutionary theory evolutionary views are adopted by dispenser uh, before darwin's the origin of a species so spencer taken the darwin's theory of from uh, origin of a species his book 1859 the book of darwin i would like to remind you one thing that this question is also asked uh, in ugc net origin of a species uh, even it is asked in ugc net Uh, when origin of species was published and uh, uh, the first uh, evolutionary scientist on the earth uh, is darwin in biology but the evolution in sociologist first sociologist who who talk or Uh, explain the society on the basis of evolution is spencer these are the differences so if someone if uh, it is also asked in many examination father of social evolution is herbert spencer and father of evolution in general is darwin the british sociologist scientist was leading figure of intellectual revolution revolution of the 19th century A Spencer in his own time was enormously influential and played a significant role in the development of biology, psychology, sociology, anthropology. A Spencer was born in a middle class family in Derby, England on April 27, 1820. He was the oldest of nine children and only one to survive. this was perhaps one of the reason that he advocated the idea of the survival of the fittest theory come from the background of august uh, herbert spencer in his theory of evolution survival of, uh, herbert spencer taken theory theory from darwin and uh, that it mentioned in origin of species origin of a species that is uh, struggle for existence survival of the fittest a struggle for existence survival of the fittest and natural selection you must remember this is also asked in examination so uh, in his theory evolution his father william george spencer was a schoolmaster of Uh, progressive educational views william george spencer's influence on his son attitude and behavior was considerable father's non authoritarian teaching method strongly influenced spencer's educational theories and democratic discipline in the classroom spencer's mother harriet exerted a comparatively little influence on his intellectual development she was sweet tempered submissive dutiful and selfless as spencer never went to conventional school spencer was in fact taught at home by the father and uncle at the age of 13 he moved to the home of an uncle thomas rector of hinton charter house semester for his further study his uncle the dissenting clergyman taught spencer the principle of philosophical radicalism and rigid code of dissenting protestantism tantism the education spencer received from his father and uncle 
lived heavily on the scientific side, received no formal instruction in English, and his knowledge of history was superficial. He had a good back once at the age of 16. In 1837, he began to work as civil engineer for railway till 1946. During this period, Spencer continued to study on his own fiction political works. In 1848, Spencer, um, uh, Spencer tutor of the econ uh, economist and his intellectual idea, economical work, in Yon, his own and began to publish, he was appointed an Eddie Bregan to take Shan the Economist. Spencer advanced generally essential to human, uh, so um, it is not so much uh, uh, important, but uh, we will see the Spencer's most important work. Uh, so, here uh, it, a very important uh, thing, in fact, he independently created ideas of his own. Finally, at the end of his life, he died as a sad man because he believed that his life work has not achieved its goal as much as he expected. He died on December 8, 1903 at the age of 83. Important works uh, of uh, Herbert Spencer. That is very important. You must remember these social statics in 1851, first principle, 1862, and the study of sociology, 1873, descriptive sociology, 1890. But there are so many books also written by Herbert Spencer. Theory of organic analogy, the most important theory uh, that is written and, uh, by August Comte. Herbert Spencer is best known, known for his bioorganismic conception of society. According to bioorganism means he compares society as a biology, as an organism. Uh, society is like organism. According to him, society is not merely a collection of individuals. It is more than that. Just as an organism, society is just an organism. It is more than mere collection of cells. As then come to sociology via biology. You must remember this. Therefore, he drew analogy between society and biological organism. So, completely is society organized on the same system as an individual. He argued that we may perceive something more than an analogy between them. The same definition of life applied to both biological social organism and society. Spencer believed that the social structure is a living organism. It is made up of part which can not which can be distinguished but which cannot survive or exist except within the framework of society. Spencer wanted to explain clearly the nature of social structure by the help of this theory. He tried to point out certain striking similarities between the individual living organism and society on account of which the individual may be regarded as microscopic, esco, micro, esco, cosmic society and society as macro cosmic individual. The similarities between society and individual as, or, as uh, individual organism as drawn by Herbert Spencer are followed. Here uh, we will see the similarities as well as dissimilarities. Here is differences for inanimate bodies. The first difference from inanimate bodies, the first similarities between a living organism and society is their differences from inanimate uh, bodies. None of them is inanimate. In an animate, there is no growth and development, but on the other hand, there is continuous growth and development in both society and living organism. On account of their common difference from the inanimate body, society and living organism may be regarded similar. Increase in quantity lead to change in a structure. The second similarity in society 
and living organism is that increase of quantity in both lead to change in their, their structure. So quantity increase their structure change according to Spencer as there is uh, increase in the quantity of their living organism their uh, changes in a structure in the same way society changes the primitive living organism is a unicellular creature but with the increase in the cells differentiation of organs result at the higher level of evolution a structure of the body becomes quite complex similar is the case of society in the beginning the structure of society is very simple at the level uh, each individual does all the work by himself and there is no differentiation of function each man himself is a craftsman hunter a sculptor it is but with the quantities increase in society the uh, a structure becomes more and more complex and there is increasing differentiation of function in society like the organs of the society the function in society become specialized in the same way the organism function is specialized change in structure leads the change in function with the change in structure organ and communities the result a change in their function the function become more and more specialized this applies to the body of a life creature with the change in the structure of organs there is change in function also differentiation as well as harmony of organs while it is true with the evolution there develops greater differentiation in the organs of society as also that of an individual but side of this differentiation there is also harmony between various organs so each organ is complementary of other and most and more and not opposed this holds true both in the society and in the both body of organism and society same loss of an organ does not necessarily result in the loss of organism in the same way in the society loss of any unit does not mean mm, so loss of uh, society if one individual lost his hand it is not necessary that this may result in his death similarly in society loss a particular association does not necessarily mean death of the society and similar process and method of organization there is another similarity between the society and living organism. According to Spencer, as there are various systems, respiratory, circulatory system, etc. Similarly, various systems in the social organism responsible for its efficient functioning in society, transport system, production and distribution system, etc. fulfill their respective roles. Thus, Spencer has shown similarity between a living organism and the society now we will see the differences between social society and individual organism along with pointing the similarities between the individual organism and the society herbert spencer spelled the differences between them he said the part of animal from a concrete hole but the part of society from the hole which is discrete while the living unit composing the others are bound together in close contact the living unit composing the other uh, area free are not in contact and are more or less widely dispersed in other words the organism is concrete integrated while where a society is a wall composed of discrete and dispersed element must remember in the biological organism consciousness is a small part of the aggregate in the social organism diffuse thought uh, the aggregate all the un units possess the capacity for happiness and misery if not in equal degree still in degree at the appro approximate as then there is no social sensorium uh, the welfare and of the aggregate considered apart from that of the unit 
is not in to be sought. The society exists for the benefits of its member, not its member for the benefit of society. Thus, there are certain crucial differences between the society and living organism, which cannot be overlooked. These are uh, the part of body are incapable of independent existence. The part of societies can exist independently. Explaining the differences between a living organism and society, Spencer observes that whereas the various organs of the body are incapable of independent existence, same is not in the case of society. The various part of society can exist independently, whereas the limbs of body like hand, leg, etc. cannot be conceived to exist outside of body. There is no such difficulty in conceiving the independent existence, existence of family association apart from society. So and these are the differences. Differences regarding centrality of consciousness. Mm, there is another difference between the society and a living organism. The differences pertain to consciousness. In a living organism, there is one central consciousness which is conscious of the whole body. There is no separate consciousness and thinking power in the various part of the body. On the other hand, in society, <clears throat> there is no central consciousness, only individual possess consciousness. Difference regarding dependence of organism or uh, organs on organism. Both the society and individual are the organism. The organs of society are individual, family, group, etc. and the part of body are its various organs. According to Spencer, part of body are dependent upon the body. Their existence is for the sake of body. On the other hand, in society its parts are more significant than society. Indeed, society exists, exists for the good of its constituents. As Spencer was a thinker, he had affinity with individualistic philosophy, according to which mm, the state and society exist for the good of the individual and not vice versa. Spencer maintains that we can understand society best if we compare it with, with an organism. He thinks that society is like biological system, a greater organism, alike in its structure and its function, like an organism. Society is also subject to the same process of gradual growth or development from a simple to complex state like any organism. Society also exhibits differentiation in function and integration of a structure. In this connection, it must be noted that Spencer does not subscribe to the view that society is an organism. Society is not just like organism just organism it is uh, it function is like organism he maintain it only as an analogy just analogy Spencer indicate that society resembles an organism in the following important aspects just resembles both grow or develop gradually both begins as gems both exhibit exhibit differentiation in a structure and function in both there are also exist close integration interdependence of part both are composed of unit units in both cases individual unit have no existence apart from the whole both have a special sustaining distributive system circulation of blood through veins in the organism and circulation of goods through transport and commercial services in society both as an uh, eliminatory system, a special circulatory or organism and go on uh, complex in they grow, become more structured. With the above mentioned similarities, there are however certain point dissimilarities. Also, society is also, uh, society is also unlike organism in the following response. In the organic growth, nature plays dominant role and organism naturally grows. On the other hand, social growth may be checked or st as stimulated by the self, but the lose their identity when integrated 
within the organic whole. They have no separate life or existence, but within a society, an individual can be fitted as constituent part of social whole while maintaining its own distinctive character and separate individual life. The discrete character of social organism and concrete nature of the animal organism is another fundamental difference. In an organism, consciousness is concentrated in the small part uh, of the aggregate that is in the nervous system. While in society, it is diffused throughout the whole aggregate. You must remember this um, can be asked in Eugenet for the concept. In brief, Spencer made fruitful attempt to establish a theory of organic analogy on the basis of evolutionary principle by making a detailed analysis of similarities and differences between human society and biological organism. And in later writing, Spencer used the organic analogy and continued to build in th his theory of evolution. Now, uh, we will uh, discuss about social evolution. That is the very important, actually he is uh, uh, known as the father of social evolution. So this theory is very important. The theory of social is evolution is described in his book, First Principle. First Principle is very important book. The most important contribution of Herbert Spencer to sociology, however, is the theory of evolution. Evolution, uh, uh, evolution has been defined by Herbert Spencer. Evolution is an integration of matter and concomitant dissipation of motion during which the matter passes from an indefinite incoherent homogeneity to a definite coherent heterogeneity and during which the retained notion undergoes a parallel transformation within the framework of universal evolution. As Spencer developed in his three basic laws and four secondary proposition catch building upon each and upon the doctrine of evolution so here you must remember indefinite incoherent homogeneity to definite coherent heterogeneity uh, society or organism passes through indefinite incoherent homogeneity to definite coherent and heterogeneity uh, the three base, uh, uh, August, uh, Herbert Spencer uh, developed three basic law and four secondary laws. So here is three basic law. Three basic law is the law of persistence of force, the law of indestructibility of matter, the law of continuity of motion. You must remember this. The law of persistence of force means everywhere there is force in the society and the law of indestructibility of matter means uh, e over m e is equal to mc square means a matter is not uh, destructive matter is indestructibility the quality of matter is indestructibility disproved by modern physics and the law of continuity of motion means everywhere there is a motion and motion is going on this is continuum and for secondary preposition proposition are persistence of relation between force uh, and motion transformation and equivalence of force force is trans form tendency of everything to move along the line of less resistance least resistance to greater attraction you must remember this the principle of alternation or rhythm of motion principle of alternation of motion. The following is a further explanation of this law. Force tends to persist. Force tends to persist according to first law of energy. There is no de diminution or increase in the energy in course of evolutionary change. The point of energy is persistence. It undergoes changes. The energy is the cause of evolution but itself unaffected by the evolutionary so energy is compulsory, the matter is indestructible. According to Spencer, matter which is one form 
or as aspect of energy is never destroyed it may undergo formal changes but it uh, cannot uh, wither away or vanish from the world so matter matter is not destroyed never destroyed the changes in the form of matter are but the fundamental the nature of matter never change therefore matter is indestructible you must remember motion is indestructible uh, the third primary law is the law of motion like matter motion is also never destroyed also there is continuous form of motion motion is always there motion is continuous and it is never wholly dissipated there are of course changes in the form of motion it is on account of these changes in form that there are stages in the evolutionary process so motion is always transforming and always there in the society and uh, force is always there secondary law besides the above mentioned three primary law of physical evolution spencer has you know uh, merited, merited four secondary laws of evolution uniformity of all law according to spencer there are, must be harmony among the various law of evolution no two law should be contradict each other principle of formal changes and uniformity according to this law neither matter nor motion are ever completely destroyed these undergo changes in form only of course even quantum of matter and mo and motion remain static principle of least resistance and great attraction according to this um, third law of evolution the direction of evolution is always toward the link of least resistance and great attraction what is the nature of human being least resistance or great attraction principle of continuity of motion for evolution motion is essential it is required that motion should be at one level all the time it may speed up or slow down according to spencer herbert spencer the knowable universe consists of material aggregate which are always in a condition of incessant change there is a universal tendency for element to move from uh, a condition of unstable equilibrium to a stable state of equilibrium now we will talk about so uh, he does the changes involve transition from homogeneity to heterogeneity uniformity to multiform as spencer noted social organism organization is at first phase at once being settled arrangement which grows slowly more which while gaining fixity also become more specific in their application to varieties of actions and all institutions at first confusedly intermingled slowly separate at the same time that each within itself marks of more distinctly distinctly its component structure thus in all respect is fulfilled the formula of evolution there is progress towards greater size coherence and multi greater size coherent multiformity and definiteness so indefinite so definite incoherent to coherent and uh, 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 less size uh, little size to greater size now sociology as a science herbert spencer discuss sociology as a herbert spencer in fact several book on sociology says as social static in his uh, very famous book and the study of sociology principle of sociology but he did not give a formal definition of discipline according to him social process is a unique and therefore sociology as a science must explain to present situation of society by explaining initial stage of evolution and apply to them the law of evolution spencer mainly tried to establish a comparative science of society based on evolutionary principle herbert spencer was influenced by comte spencer has taken the idea of science sociology from august comte during his lifetime according to his critics therefore he has indebted to comte but spencer denied such an allegation and affirmed that he had not read comte 
we must understand that Comte, Comte was also an evolution, evolution, evolutionist. Comte also um, uh, gives his theory, uh, theory of theorist law of theory stage is based on evolution, uh, first stage, theological, metaphysical, and uh, scientific stage that is from simple to complex and uh, indefinite to co indefinite and incoherent to coherent uh, um, heterogeneity uh, to uh, uh, definite indefinite to definite homogeneity to heterogeneity like comp spencer believed that science of society were characterized by an order of coexistence and progress must remember this in this sense spencer observed that individual and social organism progress from low type low type to high type in his progress from uniformity of a structure to multi uh, multiformity of a structure spencer divided all phenomena in the universe into three categories uh, uh, inorganic organic and super organic based on evolutionary framework the social science that is sociology according to spencer is based on super organic that is the social evolution must remember herbert spencer on the possibility of a science of sociology in the study of sociology and accepted that sociology is a true science based on the positive principle of natural phenomena so he also told that it should be based on natural science like biology sociology should be studied on the scientific method um, whatever I just come say there can be no complete acceptance of sociology as a science wrote a Spencer on the possibility of science of sociology so long as the belief in a social order not conforming to natural law survives uh, here Spencer emphasized on the belief in the social order that has to be discussed on the basis of all other natural laws social laws he insisted are like all the natural laws in this way he maintained that um, causation operation human behavior just as it does in other spheres of nature spencer also accepted the role of history in the new science sociology he argues that the only history that is of practical value is what may be called descriptive sociology and the highest office which the historian can discharge is that of so narrating the lives of nation as to furnish material for comparative sociology and for the subsequent determination of the ultimate law in which social phenomena conformed history the then according to Spencer is essentially sociology done will well sociology therefore is a careful description of social phenomena in evolution and so the historian and sociologist can work together in the analysis of origin present structure and future progress of social, uh, social evolution in fact all phenomena have a tendency to improve and advance and at this juncture historian and sociologist have greater role to play in the observation description comparison of the nature of social phenomena in evolutionary change the seeds of civilization existing in the ab aboriginal man and distributed over the earth were certain in the lapse of time to fall here and then there into circumstances fit for their development it seems according to spencer analysis that sociology is deeply rooted in the historical analysis of process of social evolution and hence social evolution is the key of understanding sociology now there is a concept very important concept uh, given by uh, spencer militant and industrial society spencer differentiates society uh, as a militant and different militant society is a uh, simple society and industrial society is very complex after uh, uh, after growth spencer has also discussed two types of society militant and industrial the distinction between these spencer insists is never absolute but it 
is relative to many social factors operating in a particular society at a particular time. In the Milton society, the sustaining system is directed in such a way as to achieve benefits for its armies. Such a society is characterized by militant activities. On the other hand, in the industrial society, militant strength is used only to maintain internal SP, internal peace and order and to defend society against outside invasion. For, for, uh, furthermore, in the military society, the military chief also assumes the post of the head of the state, rigid discipline and precise graduation of ranks and readily enforced private ownership of the wealth or property or means of production is not tolerated. Industry and wealth are nationalized. The individual and the praise are not granted full liberty. The behavior and the relationship of the people are brought under military code and thus are limited. Not only that in the military society, religion assumes a military character. The individual is not so much for himself as for the society and therefore cooperation is compulsory in such a society. On the other hand, in the industrial society, the principle of individual freedom is fully recognized. Governmental interference, de interference decreases concept of self-government assumes more importance. Government in religious matter is recognized. Competition in the field of trade and industry is fully allowed. Adverse uh, beliefs or criticism against the government by the public and they are tolerated. Without making this summary too long, it should be quite evident that the ideas initially elaborated by uh, Comp find further amplification and utility in a Spencer system of thought. Now we will see uh, in brief super organic concept. Spencer's concept of super organic is very important, which got wide attention from social thinkers after inorganic evolution, that is, orderly change in astronomical and geological phenomena comes organic evolution or orderly change in the vegetable and animal world. Super organic evolution behind with all those process and product which imply the coordinate action of many individuals. The dividing line between organic and super organic evolution is necessarily in, in distinct since the latter developed in an evolutionary way out of the former. Super organic evolution implies cooperation between classes of living form which have unlike a structure and consequent unlike function. In the, with the thread of analysis, L. Krober makes the super organic concept uh, a fourth order of phenomena. His classification of order of phenomena as fellow, inorganic phenomena, vital organic phenomena, mental organic phenomena and super organic phenomena. Spencer pointed out that as a result uh, of super organic evolution, a tremendous amount of super organic product like material appliance, language, knowledge, customs, myth, mythologies, theologies, cosmologies, literature and histories are accumulated in course of time and which exert an immensely voluminous, immensely complicated and immensely powerful set of influence on human belief modifying both individual and society. In the thread of analysis of society in terms of bioorganismic concept, Spencer's theory delineates the grand evolutionary philosophy where superorganic evolution reached a culminating point passing through the process of inorganic evolution and then organic evolution stage by stage superorganic concept hold good in every aspect of society process. Thus, Giddings has aptly stated society's orga organism or they are super organic aggregate. And uh, uh, you know, uh, is the father of 
functionalism also and father of individualism. Herbert Spencer is considered as both functionalist as well as evolutionist. His theory is functionalism. Function for Spencer is inevitable for society and this school became central stage of theoretical orientation in sociology. He, he wrote in 1876 in volume third of his principal sociology on the utility and usefulness of function. In his word, there can be no true conception of a structure without a true conception of its function. At the same time, society has greater role to play for the benefits of its member. One thing I would like to remind you that this question in, is always asked in UGC net examination that first of all, uh, which scientist uh, uh, described about function and structure. So we should come to know uh, that uh, he is uh, August uh, Herbert Spencer has described first um, the structure and function. Spencer stated the society exists exist for exists for the benefit of its member, not its member for the benefit of society. The claim of the body politic are nothing in the in them and become something only in so far. Change in structure cannot occur without changes in function. It, so this is this is the Spencer was by nature not only functionalist but also individualistic. There may essentially a component are necessary for the determination of characteristics of the whole of the society and that fundamental characteristic is the individual. In this regard, Spencer conceived that society would work as a vehicle for the enhancement of individual purposes. Spencer stated just the kind of individuality will be acquired which find in the most highly organized, organized community the fittest sphere for its manifestation. The ultimate main will be one whose private requirement coincide with public ones. He will be that manner of man who is spontaneously fulfilling his own nature incidentally perform the function. The best society therefore is society that applies least control on the individual uh, uh, for functionalist approach of a Spencer. If society is to evolve into higher and more advanced social structures and function, it must move from simple to complex activities of a society which is related to the movement from the lesser military stage to the more industrial societies are problematic and difficult. However, the construction of his function approach a uh, functional approach gives a broader understanding of various part of society in belief the relation between man or animal and his constituent cell is equivalent to the religion between society and its constituent cell um, mean uh, this is the analogy of a scale and a strongly suggested suggests uh, and the continuity of phenomena the, Herbert Spencer is the father of social evolution. He was a leading figure in the intellectual evolution of 19th century. Spencer was considered as the second founding father of sociology only after the Auguste Comte. Spencer in his own time was enormously influenced and played a significant role in the development of biology, psychology, sociology and anthropology. So it was discussed earlier. Organic analogy is one of the important work of Spencer. Here tries to establish relation between human society and biological organism. So this was Herbert Spencer. I think uh, you can you have understood in a uh, in detail manner. So thank you very much.